Hello and welcome to RMU Live. I'm John Blinn. And I'm Sonu Babu. Today is March 9th, 2020. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases in the U.S. topped 500 over the weekend. At least 19 people have died in the U.S. after contracting the virus, and health officials expect the death toll to continue to tick up. As David Daniel reports, federal efforts are now focused on mitigating the severity of the outbreak. Seven weeks after the first case of coronavirus in the United States was identified by authorities in Washington State, the quick-spreading virus has popped up in more than 30 states and the District of Columbia. Federal health agencies focused on preventing spread of COVID-19 within the U.S. now looking to provide assistance to the growing number of local communities grappling with the virus. Now we're shifting into a mitigation phase, which means that we're helping communities understand you're going to see more cases. Unfortunately, you're going to see more seconds. deaths, but that doesn't mean that we should panic. The president's coronavirus task force, led by Vice President Mike Pence, working with federal agencies to mass produce test kits and provide them to health facilities in every state. No public health doctor who has asked for a test has not been able to get a test. Officials ramped up development seconds. of coronavirus tests in recent days, attempting to meet the growing demand across the country. We have 75,000 tests available right now for folks um, by Early next week, tomorrow, we should have over 2 million tests okay. available. Uh, by the end of the week, through partnerships with private industry, over 4 million tests available. I'm David Daniel reporting. Thank you, David. Here in Pennsylvania, there are now seven positive cases of coronavirus. Two new cases were announced on Sunday in Montgomery County from international exposure. The individuals are adults with mild symptoms. So far, all six cases are from the eastern part of the state. Drivers in Pennsylvania could receive fines if they are caught on camera speeding through active work zones. According to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation and the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission, the new rule will begin today after a 60-day pre-enforced period. Drivers will not receive a fine after the first time if caught, but if caught again, the driver will receive a fine of $75, and every offense after that will be a fine of $150. Two people were taken to the hospital after an accident that took place in Beaver County. The accident took place on Route 51 in Aliquippa at around 9.30 p.m. on Sunday. One person was flown to the hospital from the area and the other was transported in an ambulance. The investigation is still ongoing. A fire in a boiling springs log cabin left a woman and a firefighter dead. At 1.30 in the morning, the cabin was covered in flames. The woman's body was found on the second floor and her husband escaped with fatal injuries. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Pittsburgh tax dollars are being used to keep schools that have not been used by their district for years open. Four Pittsburgh public schools were recently put on the market. The request for proposals closed for two of the schools this month, Belmer School and Mann School. The Fourth River Development is in charge of keeping the buildings closed but in good condition, and this is costing taxpayers. Residents are hoping to find deals that will take some burden off of them. Two people were killed Sunday afternoon after a login truck collided with an Amish buggy. A logging truck hit an Amish buggy from behind on Clintonville Road in Venego County. Out of the family of five in the buggy, a woman and a boy were pronounced dead at the scene. The road was closed for several hours. And a man was arrested after a police chase on 8th Avenue in Monhall. Police initially pulled over Michael Kaselka for towing a car without caution lights, but he drove away. The chase ended near the Squirrel Hill Tunnel, where he resisted arrest. Police found that Kaselka was driving with a suspended license, and the truck belonged to someone in West Virginia. After searching the truck, police found marijuana and drug paraphernalia, as well as a switchblade. Kaselka was taken into custody and is now facing several charges, including resisting arrest and reckless driving. North Korea fired four projectiles Sunday morning, according to a U.S. official. The official said the U.S. is still assessing the type of projectiles. Two other U.S. officials say the test was not unexpected. One of the officials said, quote, signs, unquote, had been observed but didn't say what signs. The Pentagon is referring to U.S. forces Korea, which released a statement saying they are aware of the launch into the East Sea. 
The statement also said the U.S. will, quote, monitor the situation, unquote. With Japan and South Korea images published last week by North Korea's state media, show leader Kim Jong-un monitoring the test drilling of long-range artillery firepower. We're now going to go over to our weatherman, Scott McDaniel, who will give us a live look at today's weather. Scott, what do you have for us? All right, well, it is certainly looking uh, very nice out here today. Definitely getting out of those uh, winter, you know, like depression, you know, stuff like that. Sorry, give me a sec. Um, as you can see, we, are got, uh, we got some beautiful clouds out here. It is sunny, blue skies. You know, actually, I just realized it kind of contradicts itself. However, not, not much clouds, not much blue skies, you know, deal. Feels very nice out here. It's like a nice, cool 55. Definitely getting out of the winter here. Definitely getting into those spring months very soon. Uh, looking up here in the two weeks on March 20th. But now looking at today's forecast, we have uh, cloudy conditions with a high of 60 and a low of 50. Humidity, we are looking at 42% and a chance of precipitation at 0%. Um, be sure to tune in uh, later in the broadcast for my weather forecast, but for now, we're going to be tossing it back to John and Sonu at the desk. To get even more RMU-related content, be sure to tune in to RMU Radio. You can listen live with the Radio FX app, or you can download Podbean for the latest podcasts for sports, music, movies, and news. Also, be sure to check out the recently made RMU Radio Spotify account. Coming up after the brace, break, Nathan Breisinger is in the Sports Center with RMU Sports. And Robert Morris is preparing for the coronavirus. Stay tuned on RMU Live. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. I don't remember how it started. Talk to Dad. Oh, Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Jason, let's go see your room. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to RMU Live. As the coronavirus spreads, RMU is taking additional precautions on campus. All students, faculty, and staff are advised to self-report about any domestic or international travel. Individuals should also contact My Health at School Center at 412-397-6220. A telephone screening will be held to be advised of any further steps. Robert Morris University will be hosting a workshop on religious and spiritual diversity for employees. The workshop is the result of a grant provided by the Religion and Spirituality Focal Group received and sponsored by the Interfaith Youth Group. Participants will learn how to become more effective educators and staff in multi-faith settings. RMU's club bowling team were awarded conference honors last week. The conference was held in front of Wayne, Indiana. The team was awarded conference honors at the American Heartland Intercollegiate Bowling Conference Championships. Now we're going to send it over to Nathan Breisinger, who's in our sports center to break down everything Bobby Moe Athletics. Nathan, what do you have for us? Thanks, John. While we were all on break, the men's basketball team was competing in the NEC Conference Tournament at the UPMC Event Center. 
Last Wednesday, the Colonials outlasted St. Francis Brooklyn 59 to 58. Then on Saturday, they dominated the LIU Sharks from the start, beating them 86 to 66. In that game, AJ Brahma led the team with 18 points. Now the Colonials take on St. Francis tomorrow night in the NEC Championship game here on campus at the UPMC Event Center as they look to earn an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. As for the women's basketball team, they close out their regular season on Thursday, crushing St. Francis 62-29. to RMU finished 17-1 in the conference and clinched the number one seed for the NEC tournament. Postseason action will begin tonight as the Colonials host the eighth-seeded Wagner Seahawks. Also, head coach Charlie Buscalia has won NEC Head Coach of the Year for the fourth consecutive season. And Neka Azebo was selected to the All-NEC First Team. And also, not only were the basketball teams kicking off their postseason, but the men's hockey team also hosted a three-game playoff series themselves. The team took on Holy Cross and lost their first game on Friday, 2-0. However, on Saturday, Santeri Hardikan had lifted Robert Morris to a 2-1 overtime victory, sniping one past the Crusaders netminder. In the series deciding contest on Sunday, RMU dominated with a 5-1 victory. The Colonials will now take on number two Sacred Heart in the corner finals this coming weekend. As for the women's hockey team, they also competed in their postseason tournament. They advanced to the championship game after erasing a two-goal deficit to defeat Syracuse 5-2. In the championship game, however, the Colonials lost in heartbreaking fashion to the Mercyhurst Lakers 2-1 in overtime. Michaela Boyle scored that lone goal for the Colonials. Finally, both the men and women's lacrosse teams continued their non-conference play over the break. The men's team won both their matchups as they beat Detroit Mercy 16-13 and Marquette 11-10. Austin Popovich led the team with 12 points, including six goals. And as for the women's team, they took on Bucknell at the beginning of the break, beating them 11-8. Then the team traveled to take on Radford as they handled them easily, winning 17-5. The team finished their Virginia road trip against Liberty. However, they would drop this one 14-13. Mackenzie Gandy led the team through this stretch with 14 total points. And that is all the sports I have now for you guys. Back over to the desk. Thank you, Nathan. Be sure to visit ColonialSportsNetwork.com for all sports-related content. After the break, learn more about Meatball Day. And a landmark is returning to Kennywood. Keep it here for more RMU Live. So many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Sometimes we can do things that exclude others. You're still talking to your friend? It's complicated. I think he went back in. We gotta go get him. Welcome to Jumanji! Even the smallest words and actions can have a big effect on someone. You have the skills. Because of you, someone's entire day, their year, or their life can change. Remember, the future is in your hands. Visit becauseofyou.org to learn more. Totally! Let's do it! Welcome back to RMU Live. Monday's weather forecast, cloudy with a chance of meatballs. That's because it's National Meatball Day. Restaurants across the U.S. are serving up special offers, so hold the fries and try a meatball side dish. You could throw your own meatball party, take your time and savor them, or you could wolf them down in a meatball eating contest. 
There are plenty of ways to enjoy meatballs, meatball subs, meatball pizza, Swedish meatballs, you name it. If you take part in the National Day, be sure to use the social media hashtag National Meatball Day. And the floral clock will be returning to Kennywood Park. It will now be in a new location. Kennywood Park is opening May 2nd this year. The Special Olympics Pennsylvania said that 2020 indoor winter games were canceled as a result of concerns stemming from the coronavirus. The organization said that the health and safety of participants was the top priority. The events were set to begin this Saturday. Fall back, spring forward. This weekend, many of us will be adjusting our body clocks and getting one less hour of sleep. For a look at the impact tinkering with time has on your body, here's Mary Maloney with today's Health Minute. It's that time of year again. Time to spring forward and change your clock. On Sunday at 2 a.m., the time will advance instantly, but it will take a lot longer for our body clocks to adjust. Losing one hour may not seem like much, but that small change can be a big deal for your health. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, many people aren't getting enough sleep to begin with. So the additional sleep shortage can lead to deadly consequences. The Monday after the time shift is linked to an increase in car crashes. That's according to a Stanford University study which looked at two decades worth of data. Also, adults who miss out on even one hour of sleep a day are more likely to report health problems like diabetes, depression, and heart disease. That's compared to those who get seven or eight hours of sleep. Experts suggest you use the time change to reset your sleep habits to make sure you get enough rest. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mary Maloney. Brad Paisley is stopping in Pittsburgh. He is joined with Mun Hall's Gabby Barrett for this tour. The two will be playing at the SNT Bank Music Park on Saturday, August 8th. Gabby Barrett played with Toby Keith in Pittsburgh last fall. Tickets go on sale March 13th at 10 a.m. And for more information on news, sports, and arts and entertainment, visit rmucentrymedia.com for the latest student-run news. Coming up, we break down the week's box office hits. Don't touch that dial and stay tuned here on RMU Live. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 mile per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Sometimes we can do things that exclude others. You're still talking to your friend. It's complicated. I think he went back in. We gotta go get him. Welcome to Jumanji! Even the smallest words and actions can have a big effect on someone. You have the skills. Because of you, someone's entire day, their year, or their life can change. Remember, the future is in your hands. Visit becauseofyou.org to learn more. Totally! Let's do it! Not even the cor Not even the coronavirus, let alone the competition, could keep Pixar's new movie from soaring at the box office. So new Babu has more from the theater. Thank you, John. Here's what's going on at the box office. Harrison Ford and The Call of the Wild fell to fifth place on ticket sales of seven million dollars. Eight million dollars gave Sonic the Hedgehog fourth place and a domestic total of one hundred forty-one million. 
The Way Back starring Ben Affleck opened in third place, and the inspirational drama made eight and a half million dollars. After one weekend on top, The Invisible Man fell to second place, taking in 15.2 million. Onward, the latest animated adventure from Pixar easily debuted atop the box office, opening with 40 million dollars. Movies debuting this week include Tokyo Godfather coming to theaters today, while Bloodshot, The Hunt, and I Still Believe and Big Time Adolescence will be in theaters March, Friday, March 13th. Thank you. Let's go over to John on the desk. Thanks, Sonu. Speaking of movies, children under the age of 18 years old will now be unable to see movies in the Monroeville Theater without a parent or a legal guardian. The new rule says that parents must stay and watch the same movie with their child at all times after 6 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. The mall says that those who do not follow the rule will be asked to leave. Coming up after the break, Tennessee continues to recover from a tornado. And Scott McDaniel is in the Weather Center, ready to give us a full look at the weather forecast for the upcoming week. Stay tuned. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Tilly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. I got it! Hi. Can you help me? I got it. Thank you. No problem. Just like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated and stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared, so start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. What are you doing in there? What's that? Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. What are you doing? What are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> People across Middle Tennessee are dealing with the aftermath of that string of deadly tornadoes, but communities are rallying and helping each other. Like one woman who now has a special needs van thanks to generous strangers, Alexandria Adams reports. On Easter of 2017, where her and her fiance at the time was riding a four-wheeler and was going up a hill and it flipped and broke her neck and paralyzed her from her chest down. It's the day that changed their lives and their daughter Brittany's forever until Tuesday when the Davis family lost their home and the van they had saved up for months they used to get Brittany around was destroyed. Since everything has come crashing down, I've just been worried about, you know, how, you know, we were going to get another one. But the community in Donaldson and people all over saw their need through a GoFundMe page and stepped up to raise some $34,000 for a new van. This is like beauty from the ashes that we got. Just praying that God would send someone to, or or a way for us to get another van and that's what that's what y'all have done y'all have answered our, you know our prayers it's more than just a van for this 24 year old it's a part of her life that lets her escape because like without having my legs you know and being able to walk you know we're pretty much stuck in here all the time and but stuck no more Brittany will be back visiting her family's Donaldson home that lays in pieces 
But she says through her faith and people who are helping their family and others will get through this. And there's always going to be people who you would least expect to come and be that light for you and, and to help you in your time of need. In Donaldson, Alexandria Adams, News 4. Thank you, Alexandria. We're now going to send it back over to Scott McDaniel, who's here to give us a full look at this week's forecast. Scott, what do you have for us? Why, thank you, John. Well, as you can see here, over here, right next to me, uh, we are not getting uh, cloudy with a chance of meatballs, like you said earlier. Uh, however, we are looking at uh, cloudy conditions with a high of 60 degrees and a low of 50 degrees, as well as a humidity of 42% and a 0% chance of precipitation. Now, moving on to the uh, hourly forecast over here, uh, as you can see, uh, we're looking at 3 p.m. We have uh, partly cloudy conditions with a high of 61. Uh, 6 p.m., we're going to be keeping keeping those exact same conditions, cl partly cloudy and uh, 61. And then 9 p.m., we're going to be looking at cloudy conditions with 56%. Now, going on to tomorrow's forecast, we're going to be looking at a high of 55 and a low of 32. Uh, humidity, we're going to be looking at uh, 81%. And then precipitation, there's going to be some rain in the morning uh, with an 80% chance of precipitation. Now, moving on to uh, the five-day forecast over here, as you can see, uh, we are looking at partly cloudy conditions with a high of 49 degrees and a low of 39 for Wednesday. Thursday, we're going to be looking at partly cloudy conditions once again with 59 degrees as the high and 49 degrees as the low. Friday, partly cloudy once again with a high of 56 and a low of 35. Saturday, we're getting all those clouds, baby, with a high of 46 and a low of 33. Sunday, we are taking away half those clouds once again, partly cloudy conditions, with a high of 47 and a low of 30. Thank you for uh, tuning in. For now, we're going to be talking back to John and Sony at the desk. Thank you, Scott. And stay tuned for a host of great programming on RMU TV. Mondays at 1, get your news fix with RMU Live. Wednesdays at 5 is Sports Talk in the Berg and RMU Tonight Show with RMU Kidding Me. Tune in on Thursdays at 9 for Colonial Sports Network and get all your RMU news with RMU Focus Fridays at 1 here on RMU TV. And, uh, John, I heard that you went to Canada over spring break. I did, so it was a great time. I'd never been out of the country before, so it was, uh, it was something different. I went with Jonah Hoy, so if you know him, you know he's yep. a wanderer. Uh, so it was just a great time to just follow him around and see something different. What about you? What would you do? Well, all I did was stay safe from the coronavirus by <laughs> staying inside. I just, you know, I watched A Quiet Place. I don't know if you watched that movie before. I have. But, yeah, I caught up on movies, watched The Quiet Place. Um, the second one is coming out in March, so I'm excited for that. And that's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning in on this Monday afternoon. We'll see you next week. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for 75 years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like, if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 mile per hour winds are expected. According to asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it. Let's go. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Go fish!
It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today.